Welcome to Indigenous Voices. The Royal Ontario Museum is happy you're home and safe and don't have to wear these masks all day long. Thanks for joining Indigenous Voices. We're always keen to find out how many of you have been here before. There are 1,272 of you that have tuned in today. We're so excited to invite you to a very important uh, Indigenous Voices webinar that looks at genocide awareness. So 91% of you have been to the Royal Ontario Museum before and 9% of you are new and here for the first time. So thanks so much and welcome to everybody for tuning in. The Royal Ontario Museum is a beautiful space that belongs to all of Ontario and it just celebrated its 107th birthday. So that's why at the beginning of in every episode of Indigenous Voices, we take time to acknowledge the ancestral homeland. And that's largely because not all of us come from this beautiful city of Toronto. In fact, here's a beautiful photograph of my hometown back home. This is my favorite parking spot down by the Harbor Key. And it's where the ocean and the fresh water meet. It's called an inlet, the Port Alberni Inlet. And so I'm excited that I tune in from far, far away from home, even though I live in downtown Toronto now. And I acknowledge that the ROM has only been here for 107 years. And I want to thank the ancestral homelands of the Anishinaabe, Mississauga, the Credit, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat, Wendat for allowing us to gather on their land. I'm also curious, as we're getting ready for today, I wonder, the music we had at the top of the in the waiting room asani has generously let us use her music how many people moved a little bit i'm a bit of a dancer so i like to tap my toes and move around i'm so excited it's music that i set up so that we, we we feel good when we're here because indigenous people don't just play drums and rattles we do modern music so how many of you did a little bit of moving some of you moved yes for sure a little bit some didn't move at all not everybody's a dancer so what do we got here 68% of you did a little bit of moving and some toe tapping, a little bit of toe tapping at 28%. And there's 4% of you that are probably not entirely awake or maybe dancing and moving around is not your thing. So let's just take a moment to have a really big stretch. Oh, we can learn from nature. Sometimes we just do a tuck and roll and get out of bed and forget to have a big stretch. And I wanted to give us that chance to have a big stretch because I want to talk about today's sign of the day on each episode of indigenous voices we do our best to do a sign of the day because i have deafness i wear hearing aids and my family all my kids understand sign language and so today when we're talking about genocide awareness i didn't want to actually sign genocide but what i want to sign and i want to focus on is self love or self-care. I'm not exactly sure what the difference between love and care is, but if you take your thumb and put your fist like this, like a thumbs up to yourself, take care of yourself. So today we're going to talk about self-care and there's 1,200 of you, 1,272 of you out there. And I think of those eyes looking back at me. So 1,272 times two, I don't do math fast, but there's probably some people out there that do math fast. That's how many eyes are looking back at me. And I wish I was looking at all of you because I'd asked you to do this sign with me. Touch your chest like a thumbs up to yourself. Self care. That's the sign of the day. Self care. So thanks for indulging. I really love sharing sign language with you because at Indigenous Voices, one of the things we want to do is give you a chance to see the world from different lenses. I just used a little, a little, um, a little bug eye gadget there to show. And one of the things I like to do in Indigenous Voices is just explore that there are worlds within worlds. That if we take time, we can we can learn from the world around us. So one of the things that we're aware of at, at Indigenous Voices is that we have some really important topics that we like to cover. And today is a really big topic for us. Um, that topic is all about genocide awareness. And, and when we have classrooms, we wanna know what does genocide have to do with indigenous people? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, I'm gonna go back over here, play from the start so you can see my little PowerPoint I got ready for you today, just to frame that one of the things that's important to understand about 
about genocide awareness. And we have a guest today from Facing History in Our South, Jasmine Wong, that will join us shortly. But what we're talking about is on the planet, we have a network of relationships that will start with ourself, our family, our community. It could be our nation, our city, our province, our country, our world, and the universe. And we have mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. And it all starts by taking care of ourselves. And one of the things that's really important to understand is that throughout history, we might not have respected populations based on their culture and their, the way they identify. We live in a world where we have relationships that get defined by dominant culture, Western culture, which often is also a part of, of um, expectations of how we must behave based on these rules that are made by the dominant culture. So one of the things that history has done is it has a really big, big part in dehumanizing populations because there was an incident in 1884 and I brought this up in other Indigenous Voices episodes because 18 or 1492 1492 is a really big date in history because it creates this illusion that Christopher Columbus found North America they say discovered North America no Christopher Columbus was looking for India and he arrived at the tip of South America and went back and what's more important than 1492 is the conversation he has in 1493 with the Pope and says we found new lands and the Pope says if you find new lands without any Christians you can claim it in the name of God and that's complicated because if you're not Christian History is called people who aren't Christian, which are often the indigenous populations, heathen, savage, uncivilized. So hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of this bad attitude towards indigenous populations has allowed indigenous peoples to be dehumanized. When we were getting ready for today, Jasmine and I um, uh, we're talking about this quote. She shared this quote with me that I'm happy to share with you that reads, we humanize what's going on in the world and ourselves by speaking of it. And in the course of speaking of it, we learn to be human. So sometimes, let's just hear that again. Sometimes we don't hear that the first time. We humanize what's going on in the world and in ourselves by speaking of it. And in the course of speaking of it, we learn to be human. So I'm not sure how to say Hannah's last name, but ardent, or ardent. But bigger part is just recognizing that we all play a part in, in helping bring our humanity back to the conversation. So what we're gonna do on Indigenous Voices today, I'm super excited, is that all of our Indigenous Voices aim to be a bit of an art tutorial. Today we're going to do a tutorial and if you're not following along, you're one of those people that like to learn and then follow along later, that's okay. But what we do encourage people to do is if you have a pencil and a paper, which is the basic uh, basic tools you're going to need today, I've got my handy dandy ROM pencil, which is kind of fun because if I hold it long enough it actually changes colors. So. What we're going to do today, remember we're talking about self-care, because what we want to do in preparation for talking about genocide awareness is this whole tutorial is so that classrooms uh, can also have a chance to um, plan for their own self-care. So we're going to make a self-care plan. So just so people know what we're going to make, here is an example of one that's finished for me. We're going to make an I love you symbol on a piece of paper. This is how you say, I love you in sign language. And then I'm gonna help you, uh, I'm gonna have a conversation with you about what these little symbols on the edge mean. And on the back of our, our piece of paper, that's where we're gonna start adding some of the ways that we can take care of ourselves. So these are some examples. Here's another example of what you could do, and I've already made it ahead of time, is that I did the same I love you symbol, but I cut it out. And I used a bit heavier cardstock, and I'll go over why I've got a needle and thread in there. Um, and on the back are more ideas for my self care plan. So we can use those two examples. If you don't have cardstock, 
this is how we're how we've started it so all you're going to need for your your art activation today is your i love you symbol so this is my my right hand that says i love you but i have to draw it like this and then i'll draw my fingers in later it'll make sense but here i'm encouraging if you haven't already if you say i love you like this which is kind of backwards but you'll draw your fingers in later if you start by drawing, I love you, this is just one example of how you could do a self-care plan. You can use any symbol if you like, maybe if you like guitars, maybe you're gonna draw an outline of a guitar, but because we're talking about caring for ourselves, I thought we'd use the sign, I love you. So you can see I've got a spot to now draw in my two fingers to finish the I love you. And if you're like me and wanna have some fun, you could draw, draw some, some fingernails. I feel a little pressure, people watching me. I have a handy dandy eraser. So if I'm feeling like a little extra perfectionist, but you can always just outline it in pencil. And then it's always a good habit if you want your art to stand out is be prepared to outline things in black later. Um, we're gonna be able to, to uh, start this art project with you. And if you're not following along, I really hope you do. What we're gonna do is you can be as simple or as elaborate as you want with this art project. But one of the things that we're gonna do with a self-care plan is I'm gonna get you to pick your favorite color. And today I'm, I'm really enjoying the pink colors. You could tell by my, my pink fingernail polish. And I'm gonna get people to draw their favorite color on the outline. And if you want to be one of those folks that cuts out, you know, that cuts out, uh, you know, the other approach that you could take is, if you have a piece of paper, a cardstock would be better, but if you did an outline of your hand like this entirely, then what you could do is cut that hand out and then fold the two fingers. If you're wondering how I did the cardstock one, fold your two fingers. So maybe when we're, when we're between our breaks here, I would cut this out and you would give yourself the option to have the uh, the cardstock version of this activity by cutting your hand out. But for now, for those people who might not have cardstock, just go back to your simple sketch of your hand where you've, where you've written, I love you. And my goal is for everybody, I'm just gonna explain the art, everybody to pick their favorite color and outline their, their drawing. And what I want this outline to represent your favorite color, is I want this outline to represent boundaries, what you're comfortable doing, what you're not comfortable doing. And just think about what are the places in your life where you stand up for yourself? Um, you know, you watch other people stand up for themselves. You know, I'm just thinking boundaries at any age, including me, well over 50, are always working on boundaries. You know, there's like, there's like my inner voice, my first thoughts, and then, you know, I might want to be filter that before anybody hears what my first thoughts are. But I want you to make an effort to love up this edge of boundaries, that you are worth having space that's your own. Even when it comes to difficult topics, what we're doing is we're setting up students so that students and teachers, if teachers aren't following along, I hope they are, you learn how to write, I love you in sign language, make art and be a role model for your students on what do you need to be self full of self-care so what i want to do next and i'm going to use a bit of a darker color so you can see it rather than a pencil is that i want you to decide i i like to sew so i'm going to make little dashes because the dashes to me seem like thread stitches but i want you to then outline your I love you hand that we're drawing here. If you are not following along, please do pick your favorite color, outline it to represent your boundaries. And what I'm doing with these stitches is I'm gonna use this as a symbol of what, as a way to brainstorm, what are some of the supports in my life that make me feel safe? What are some of the things or activities or people that I like to hang out with? that give me comfort and I enjoy being myself. I don't have to feel shy or awkward. They, the people around me love me and accept me. And sometimes that's at school and sometimes COVID adds an extra layer of stress because 
we're stuck in four walls and we can't get away from some of the things that stress us out by being at the school. So think about what are some of the activities or ways that you can create a little bit of space for yourself because we're all born with the birthright to live well and to have privacy. And we might not know what some of these activities are that make us feel good or feel safe, but this is just really a meditation. I'm just gonna keep encouraging you to continue to draw those lines all the way around because I'm gonna get ready to introduce my guest. What I'm gonna do after you finish all of those lines, just to give you the next step, is that people can turn their hand over and start adding parts of what gives them style or what gives them comfort. So I like to dress well. So today I dress with one of my favorite velvet jumpsuits. I like to do journal writing and dancing. And you can see on the other one, I like to watch funny movies. So we'll come back to what, these are some examples that I have jigsaw puzzles. And I'm gonna introduce our guest in a flash here because Jasmine and I are also gonna talk about some of the things that we do to give, you know, to, to comfort ourselves. And that way it might give you students at home, but while you're adding those dashes or a little bit of something, they'll symbolize ways that we can take care of ourselves. And then when you turn it over, you're welcome to use, um, things around you that inspire you I'll just go back to my super quick um super quick camera it's not letting me but it adds up that you could you look at the world around you just just to see for inspiration so here we are we're already 17 minutes into our episode art takes a long time I hope you're following along what I want to do is uh is take a moment to introduce our guest uh Jasmine um, here's a screen. I've shared a screen of what brings me joy. This is images of my family, which I think is probably an excellent place to start because you work with facing history and ourselves, and it means a lot to you to work with difficult topics. So thanks for joining us today because we all have, uh, we all have things we can learn about boundaries and taking care of ourselves. Welcome Jasmine. Thank you so much. Um, and before we begin, I just want to acknowledge um, that I am a guest and a settler and to, just to thank you as well for welcoming me and having me on the program today. Um, it's a pleasure, as always, to be in conversation with you, Jeanette. Um, I acknowledge that right now I am working and playing my family. We're together um, and keeping healthy on the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation um, and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and prior to that, the Wendat Nation as well. Um, and I feel so fortunate to be here with you and to be working and playing on this beautiful, beautiful land. So thank you for having me. Beautiful. Well, we talked about, um, we're talking about genocide awareness and we know that, you know, genocide's not an easy topic and we don't talk about genocide um, to upset people, but we know, how is it linked to indigenous peoples? We know that indigenous mm -hmm. people have experienced residential school. Mm -hmm. And that's one, one example of genocide and missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and mm -hmm. other, other cultures that experience different genocides throughout mm -hmm. history. And we don't bring up genocide to upset people, but we want students and teachers alike to feel prepared to talk about difficult topics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think difficult topics come up in all range of classrooms, whether it's a middle school classroom, picking up a piece of literature that is really heavy or that just brings up really big emotions <clears throat> or whether it is a deep study of, of histories um, like we cover in, in at Facing History in Ourselves, you know, topics of genocide do come up and, and they are really important because, you know, as you re referenced that Hannah Arendt uh, quote at the beginning, you know, we wrestle with these big histories because they tell us about what it is to be human. Um, we are not alone in these experiences that we have today in contemporary times. Um, oftentimes the things that happen in history are things that reveal both the, the utter evil that we are ca all capable of as a human sort of species, um, but also ultimate good. And so we wrestle with all these things to confront what does it mean to be human and what kind of humanity are we going to choose? Um, recognizing that these are all within the realm of possibility. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to highlight is just that, um, you know, I, I love that this is uh, an episode within Indigenous Voices because I think oftentimes when we think about what self-care and what histories and what contemporary um, thinking teaches us is that all cultures, 
all peoples have more resilience, have more uh, ways of healing than experiences of trauma. Uh, and so, you know, how do we also learn from each other? What are different ways to heal? What are different ways to take care of ourselves? And so I, I love that this is bringing those ideas together. Me too. I, one of the things that we were doing, as, as you could see while you're waiting in the wings, is we were getting ready to, we were doing art. Because one of the things we try to do on Indigenous Voices is really explore how do we, um, thinking fast, but how do we, um, share ideas through the arts to create a self-care plan for us because self-care is about as I pointed out the sign is a thumbs up to yourself self-care loving yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh what are some of the we I have a slide here that you heard <clears throat> for us to you know I did mine with you know there's no right or right wrong way to do a self-care plan I showed you and I love you symbol today just to sort mm -hmm. of play on the the sign language theme but tell us more about what we're looking at here for your inspiration yeah, so at Facing History, we often talk about sort of the toolbox of policy options around genocide, the toolbox of um, change, you know, what are the things that you have, all the different tools that you have, and some of them, you know, they're innate to you, some of them, um, like, like your love of art, or the way in which you take care of yourself, these are things, um, dance, these are things that are sort of innate to who you are, and I absolutely connect with those as well. Those are part of my toolbox for self-care, um, getting dressed and feeling like, you know, I'm put together for the day. Um, but then there's also things that I feel like I've learned and that I've added those to my toolbox. Um, and so, you know, I, and, and I, I love that this is on a sticky note because I think that this is so me, that part of being, um, you know, taking care of myself is also being organized. But it's also the ability to take this and to stick it up in, in, in any place where I feel like I need that reminder. And so what are some of the things that I have in my toolbox? I think about this pedagogical triangle that's very facing history. And there is the physical aspect, right? We, I think we all need physical wellness in order to have psychological, emotional, and, and mental wellness. And so, you know, I was reminded, I was listening to um, a calm meditation with LeBron James and he talks about how he gets eight hours of sleep a night and then he naps as well and so I think about the importance of sleep as a part of you know I'm an often neglected part of my toolbox for self-care um, but then there's emotional wellness and so I have my kids and we do dance parties and we read books and you know being in that space of reading is also about getting away and being really focused and mindful um, and then there's the mental wellness piece and that is doing things like artwork, going out for walks, setting those boundaries and saying, you know, there are times when I need to shut down my computer. There are times when I need to shut off social media and just be me, to journal, to write, to do yoga or meditation, or to connect with friends and say, you know, what's going on? Tell me what's going on with you. Let me tell you what's going on with me. And friends who see me, friends who accept and, and, and create belonging for who I am. Um, and then I put it at the center, you know, there's a couple of things that I think, right? Mom's cooking and comfort food and coffee. And <laughs> I think, yes. you know, so being able to recognize what are some of those things that are both really practical, but also some of the things that really stretch us to take care of ourselves and to center ourselves in a time when oftentimes it's really challenging. I agree. And, and one of the things we talked about, speaking of challenging, is recognizing that, you know, the metaphor of any iceberg is there's a little bit at the top and there's way more beneath the surface. So we yeah. know that really easy peasy, high, high level, there's a global pandemic. We're all stuck at home. We, we all, oops, we'll go back. We all know that that's happening, right? Um, yeah. But, you know, we're cut off from our friends, our semesters change. So we've just finished a whole whack of exams for some people. And now we have to get our head around the fact that we're learning a whole bunch of stuff new and get ready for finals in a couple of months, right? Like, or, mm -hmm. so, and under, underneath that, now that we're all stuck at home, right? One, one advantage is we don't have to be stuck behind little masks all day. We have a little bit of freedom from that, but maybe there's not enough tech at home for everybody or everybody knows that when everybody's online all at once, we've had major carriers go down because they're not enough bandwidth or lots right. of things like, you know, if there's family stress, we can't get away from the house to go home. Or if there's bullying right. at school, maybe we get a bit of a break from that by being right. here. But maybe bullying takes a different shape when mm -hmm. it's one things are online. So there's lots, you know, there's low employment, no employment. There's a lot going on for families. So self-care isn't just for difficult topics, but self-care is for life. 
experiences. Mm -hmm. And we talk getting ready for today that my background in trauma counseling reminds us that we ha all have emotions. And I put a slash behind the word emotion or behind E on purpose because our feelings have to move. And some of us cry. I had actually a good cry this morning, not to get into any details, but the older I get, I'm learning to feel my feelings as mm -hmm. I go and not just mm -hmm. let them bottle up and then take that stress out in other places where it's not, but just to feel my feelings and to ask for what I need. I'm getting much better for that. Some of us get cold when we're emotional. Some of us get really hot. Some of us get sleepy and just want to nap. Some mm -hmm. of us might just, you know, like get fidgety and can't keep still, might want to cry. Um, mm -hmm. So these are just some examples of, of how we move how we move emotions and then there's yeah. a practical side right mm -hmm. of who can we talk to because sometimes mm -hmm. our family might not be the easiest to talk to or if we're cut mm -hmm. off from our teachers and other networks here's a kid's help phone or even texting right um but when it comes to to emotions where there is no judgment we're all full of emotion right mm -hmm. but uh, how we take care of each other these are some really simple examples of what we're going to share online with you um, as resources for teachers and students that like after here's an indigenous resource that'll also come your way there's an indigenous helpline so that could be really useful for folks before we look at the next slide i'm just going to stop sharing my screen because i'm going to check my how my phone works here i'm not sure why is giving me that. Um, I was trying to find my my Zoom screen for my phone, but it's oh there it is. It says to tap. Your microphone is muted. I'm not sure why I can't. It says tap. To speak. Oh, sorry about that. This is a <clears throat> such a classic time of you know best laid plans. Um, it's so much preparation and. Yeah. My apologies, trying to share my artwork for some reason, it's telling me I need to tap to speak on my phone and I have no option to share my video camera. So I'm a little um, distracted by that, but I was just gonna go back okay. to the artwork just to playfully explore, yeah. you know, what, what are some things that, you know, I do art and sewing, I do origami and crochet. Um, I might not have all the ideas at the top of my head to be artsy this time of morning. So I dug out some rubber stamps and some stickers. I even dug out a sticker that had a hammer and a nail on it because I like to do home renovations and and fix up around my house oh, that kind great. of thing so I just wanted to sort of bring the conversation full circle back to I really hope students take that time and teachers as well because I think as educators you and I Jasmine both know that we prepared for today in different ways I was saying that I did my my pretty pink fingernails because I'm less yeah. likely to bite my nails when they look pretty and yeah, I even wore velvet. I mm -hmm. wore Grandma Moon because we've got a big full moon coming up tonight, and that you know that big energy. I wore a little a little necklace that represents my nation. And someone on the chat said, "Where'd you get your earrings? They're cute. I made them. They're they're uh, made out of porcupine quill, um, uh, hand woven earrings that I made. They're beautiful." Yeah, let's see if we have any questions. Is there anything you wanted to add about how to how to move big emotions? Um, so I did see in the chat that uh, students would love to see the I love you sign again. Um, so if you want to do that. Yeah. yeah, So it's just taking two fingers and bending them down. And this is the letter R in sign language. And if you do that together, it means I really love you. I really love you. Love oh, it. It's yeah, and so just in response to your question about moving emotion, um, I was facilitating a seminar with Lori Gallant recently, and she was telling me that there is some research that's being done now, or some research that's surfaced around how uh, deer will respond when they have gone to the water and there is a predator there. And um, researchers find that when a deer, a baby deer, goes to the water, finds a predator, if they um, then if they run away to safety and then they shake, they shake it off, um, they can then return to the water. But they find that if this baby deer isn't able to shake off, just shake, shake that energy out, um, they refuse to go back to the water. And in some cases they get sick and they die. 
And so there is something physiological, I think, about being able to shake out that energy. And it reminds me actually of, you know, the practice of Reiki or, you know, how do we use uh, yoga? How do we use basketball? Just going for, going for a run. I think these are, in, in some ways, a lot of us already recognize that when we're feeling really stressed, we just need to get that energy out. And whether it is singing at the top of our lungs, dancing, you know, doing huge artworks. I mean, these things help to move that emotion outwards. Um, and then there's, of course, practices that we often take in the classroom. So uh, after listening to testimony, after um, talking about sort of current events in the world, oftentimes we say, like, let's take time to just listen to ourselves, to breathe. Um, in breathing, we tell our bodies that it's okay. So we take big breaths and we take time to journal. We take time to put those emotions out of ourselves, to do artwork, because oftentimes there are no words yeah. for the kinds of feelings that we're feeling. Or we look to poetry because others are able to put into words the kinds of things that are going on in our heads. Or maybe we are able to put into words, into prose as a community, um, or we do walk and talks. So, you know, after experiencing something big, can you invite a friend to take a walk with you if you're like an extrovert and you need to sort of talk it out, you know, take your phone with you, go for a walk, um, or, or if you're an introvert, right, just take that time to go for a walk on your own or to, you know, uh, take that time to put those emotions, um, you know, you need a vessel to carry that so that you can hold on to it so you can remember it and honor it, um, yeah. but also to move forward. Well, I was... I was, uh, you know how social media has these pictures that come back a year later, or five years later. I had a picture of myself and even though the background was really beautiful, it was Banff on uh, Alberta. I looked really sad in the photograph and rightly so because we had been learning about the Canadian railway. And in mm -hmm. order for the Canadian railway to be finished, BC had to join Confederation. Mm -hmm. So I gotta tell you, I was making these origami butterflies which in my culture represents the gift of change, potential change from one to another. And so mm. while I'm making the origami butterflies, I remember throwing them on the table really angry. And I'm, I'm mad and I said, what do you mean indigenous rights had to be extinguished in, in British Columbia in order for them to join confederation? And I was just angry. And I give these butterflies away often because I will tell a butterfly story. Mm about mm -hmm. potential and change and, and a, a caterpillar encouraging another caterpillar. You're gonna be okay, you're gonna get sick, but you're gonna be okay. And I give these, these butterflies away and I tell people this story about how angry I was when I made those butterflies because I was being honest with my feelings, I was upset. And what stood out for me as a chuckle was that some people might get those butterflies as a gift because not we don't have to feel good about history. History mm -hmm. doesn't. You know, we don't have to come away from it going, oh, well, you know, that was so long ago, because for many of us who are impacted mm -hmm. by that history, it wasn't so long ago. Like yeah. my family got the right to vote in 1960. I was born in 1969, which means I'm the first generation with the right to vote mm -hmm. in my family, even though my family has been here since the beginning of time. So just we talk about genocide and histories and social inequities so that whatever starts to mirror bad behavior from the past, we can use history to remind us we can't go down that path yeah. because we've done damage in the past. So we didn't talk a lot about genocide today, but more about how to take care of ourselves, whether we're talking mm -hmm. about difficult topics, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. might come up in classrooms mm -hmm. that might relate to some of, we don't say issues, in the work that I do, I talk about lived experience of oppression yeah. or lived experiences. So being very kind with our words, kind mm -hmm. with ourselves. I actually wore two moccasins today because they're, I laugh because they're opposite. They're not the same moccasin, but they were still fit the left and right foot, which is kind of funny because one of the moccasins was a gift from a, a, a group of people when I was on a cancer journey. And a granny said, walk softly. Mm -hmm. walk in beauty while you're on this journey so I wear my moccasins mm -hmm. to remind myself to walk in beauty and the other moccasin is a moccasin I bought for myself they're a pair but I'm wearing two different moccasins today and I still just kept them on because I felt worthwhile and lovable but what's funny for me or Great. they're both a reminder of how loved you are and the people who care for you well the 
I love myself buying the moccasin, but I want to show you this moccasin. It actually comes from prison inmates who make them. And mm -hmm. I bought them on purpose because I wanted to support the prison inmates, which is bittersweet mm -hmm. to say, but sometimes in jail is some of the first times some mm -hmm. of our people have exposure to their culture. Mm -hmm. Because I was raised in foster care and moved around a lot. And for a lot of different reasons, not everybody grew up with culture. So I wanted to, to show support even for prisoners. Cause even when you hear elders give thanks, some people say pray or you know, acknowledge the world around us, they will pray for people who are living on the streets or who are in prison or who are going through a health journey. We're all worth, worth a good life. And mm -hmm. so one of the ways we've got, we've got about another five minutes, you and I left to have a conversation about, about our self-care work. And one of the things that we wanted to end on, I'm just trying to get to my share screen, is we wanted to end on this idea of what are the conditions we need in our classrooms mm -hmm. to create brave spaces? And we both mm -hmm. talked about circles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. circling up chairs, and you can see images in front of us of some ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that it's, I mean, you know, part of my learning is about, around circles is that we feel a place of belonging. It's a place where people can see us. And I think when we're talking about those kinds of conditions for um, self-care, but also community care, recognizing that self-care only takes you so far and that we all need sort of that proverbial village to care for ourselves. It's, you know, being able to see each other, to be able to share stories, to find a place of belonging. And so what are some of those conditions that allow us to do that? And I love that you talk about culture and as part of that, I think being in a place of belonging also means, you know, it, as educators um, who have some agency in setting the classroom, how do we invite students to be able to explore their own culture, to be able to access culture? Who is it that we know in our networks or circles that we can invite in, even joining programs like this where um, young Indigenous people can hear from Indigenous voices to learn more about uh, their own culture? Yeah. And we can, and we can see those, the world from different ways that, you know, we have certain Absolutely. ways in the Western world that we do business, but in Indigenous community, like we share some examples we talked about circling chairs. I was in this one session where we dim the lights. If you have control mm -hmm. over dimming the lights or maybe turn the lights off and put some lamps on, but it creates a softness. It creates a little bit of an anonymousness, like being anonymous. Um, maybe planning some free time afterward or something fun activity. You talked about shaking it off, the deer example. And, and I was gonna pull my chair back and spin because there's something called spinning therapy for real because it creates endorphins, oh. like the same weirdos who like to jog all the time. It creates <laughs> natural hormones that prevent depression. So when you're feeling bad or feeling low or had a tough day, they say spin in a safe space, you're not gonna bump into anything. Spin yourself into a dither and create those mm. natural, natural mm. Uh, endorphins. So that's why I like dancing so much. Um, the other is stay informed, right? Stay informed about personal support, uh, um, for staff and students and families alike. You know, mm -hmm. teachers probably hear a lot of things. You know, if students are going through a hard time, sometimes it means maybe the family is going through a hard time. So this, we're just bringing it full circle, hey? We're bringing it back to taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. our family, yeah. community. And, and those networks of care, um, just keep in mind, if I haven't said it already, um, um, we are not, we are not children forever. We are just not kids forever. We don't have to be kids forever. I wasn't a kid forever. <laughs> and we're not defined by our past. The past isn't always easy. We learn from the past so we don't replicate it. We learn some important lessons from it and try to live in a good life, right? Try to live that good life. So I don't know that there were more questions. I'll just take a quick look. I think someone's making a comment about my hair. <laughs> I love your hair. Um, what are your thoughts on Canada's attempts at reconciliation? Are they sincere? Are they enough? Would you, what would you like to see change? That's a big question, isn't it, Jasmine? Because yeah. truth is the stories that Indigenous people share and reconciliation is the work of our settler communities like yourself like our agencies, you know, like facing history in ourselves is an important working ally with the wrong because we tackle missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, residential school, 
and the generations that are impacted by that. So I think we could do um, um, create more action ideas. There's actually a really cool list of indigenous action words. And there's also principles of reconciliation um, that we can reflect on, right? That uh, mm -hmm. people can use that as an example to come up with ideas on how to build better relationships with indigenous people. Do you have any response mm -hmm. to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is. I mean, Senator Justice Mary Sinclair said, you know, this is the mountain that we have to climb as Canadians, as settlers who are here. Um, indigenous peoples have been seeking to create relationships to have a voice on their own land for generations and generations since the arrival of the first settlers. And I, and I think, you know, when we talk about reconciliation in the context of self-care and that beautiful back of the turtle with the different, you know, sort of images, um, I think it is about asking, you know, as, as, as an individual who is impacted by difficult, um, by, by colonization, you know, who are those allies who you can turn to, to say like, help me carry this because this is not mine to carry. And, and as somebody who is a settler, who is seeking reconciliation, you know, how do you step in to say like, what can I carry? Or, or how do you look around and say, these are things that I need to carry. And, and I think, you know, when you talk about murdered and missing indigenous women and girls, um, I, I see myself as part of that web uh, and say that this is impacting me too, right? This impacts all of us when any one of us is not respected, when the most vulnerable among us is not respected, it impacts all of us. And so how do I use my voice? How do I use the power that I have, the networks that I have to move conversations forward? And so, and I, and I do this in partnership. And so I, that's how I see some of my personal responsibility but it's each an individual journey because each of us has our own relationships and networks and each of us has our own sort of calling for what's important to us. Um, we move together forward um, as, as a community and, and many things can happen when done in community and in groups. Brilliant. A little short Brilliant. answer <laughs> for Thanks a really big question. We just, we just have a couple of minutes left here. Um, people, someone brought up comfort food, definitely. Butter chicken, <laughs> butter chicken is one of my favorites. For comfort today, I actually put on um, a roast in the in the crock pot, so it'll cook and smell good all day. Um, we've got, you know, you and I both know that the Royal Ontario Museum school programs and Facing History and Ourselves have some really meaningful partnerships to address missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. We are going to be sharing those resources as part of our, our follow-up education resources. And there's an ex exciting training that's coming up for teachers. So uh, there's a teacher that asked, how do we address this uh, in classrooms? Well, I hope you join the training and we can explore that together because we're all trying to figure that out together, which is about creating brave and courageous spaces where people feel heard, safe, they belong, and no one's no one's uh, feeling mm -hmm. So just as part of my wrap up, I'm going to introduce our back of house help. Thank you for helping us today, Sarah Elliott. Here we are in the Indigenous Voices Control Room. What can our teachers expect after today? Okay, so teachers, uh, keep an eye on your email inboxes. About 24 hours after this webinar, you will get an email of educational resources, uh, all those good things that Jeanette and Jasmine just talked about. Uh, also, if anybody would like to see this again, keep an eye on the ROMS YouTube channel around about Wednesday or so. Uh, the edited version of this broadcast will go up with captions. And when those educational resources reach you, there will also be a link to a survey uh, that really helps us make sure that Indigenous Voices uh, just keeps growing strong. And we know that students can share their artwork online. So we've made a little reminder for you to share uh, any of your art pieces online if you like. I think Sarah's got those at ROM Toronto. And for our Facing History, we can say at Facing Canada, or Facing Canada. So we're really excited. So you can see samples on the background there of art that students have submitted in the past to Indigenous Voices. Thanks for helping us see the world from different perspectives today. And thanks for being our guest, Jasmine. We want to have a big shout out to the Slate Family Foundation for always their generosity, the Association for Native Development of the Performing and Visual Arts for supporting our Indigenous artist fees, and for Ms. Way Beak Aboriginal Employment and Training for the youth support that has helped us over the, over the years. So thanks again, everybody for tuning in. I hope to see you again. Stay home, stay safe, and make some art. <laughs>